that doesn't matter it's not about me dharma simply put very simply put it's not about me that's all my life my sadhana whatever you want to fancy words you want to use when i say it's not about me i've understood sanatan dharma somewhat small spring comes up but at great height and then that somehow comes into the planes and it's joined by other things all the prayags it joins all the other things and it comes into the planes but it comes into the planes for what why does it come there to go back to the samudra so it's a cycle it's a cycle so knowledge may be lost but jnana cannot be lost it's uh, especially in this forum i think it is appropriate that uh, we always start everything with the invocation ananta gunapurnaya dosha duraya vishnave namah shri prananathaya bhakta adishta pradayane buddhirvaram yesho dhairyam nirbhayatva arogata ajadyam ವಾಕ್ಪಟುತ್ವಂಚ ಹನುಮತ್ ಸ್ಮರಣಾಭವೈತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯಂ ನಮ ಹರಿಯ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಉಪನಯನ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಟೀನೇಜರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಡೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಡೇ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಗಂಗೆ ಚಮನೆ ಚೈವ ಗೋದಾವರಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನರ್ಮದಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಕಾವೇರಿ ಚಲೈಸ್ಮೆನ್ ಸನ್ನಿಧಿ ಕೂರು ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ tradition if you want to call that but it's more than tradition actually it's not even just tradition it's our faith it's our belief it is our understanding and we're not invoking rivers this is a mistake a lot of people make i cannot take a cup of water and invoke rivers you talked about sacredness Uh, one of the problems we all have i have you have all of us have is that we are talking in english every sanskriti i don't know the equivalent word in english perhaps you can say culture maybe every sanskriti has certain samskaras it's not tradition those words you talked about nirvachana in sanskrit the most beautiful thing is that you give me any word any word i can tell you what the meaning is just by breaking it up and looking at the dhatu patha the core meaning and when we look at all that uh, matter of fact i just this morning i was with my shishya and rishikesh and i just came from rishikesh just few hours ago and when i was at rishikesh i i was there for four days five days something four days i guess um we i i went to there is a guha they call it gufa there but anyway cave um called vasisht guha beyond shivpuri i was sitting inside that yesterday maybe around this time right and i was sitting there the sthala purana is that vasishta sat there and did tapas maybe he did maybe he did i don't know and it doesn't even matter to me to be honest but when you go to these places one of the things i felt was that when i was sitting inside and i was trying just for 10 15 minutes i was trying to again i don't want to say meditate because i don't know what that word means <laughs> we have tapas we have dhyana we have japa i can explain all that to you if you ask me meditate i don't know what that means because it's a alien concept japa tapa that's all our concepts so the the problem one of the biggest problems that we face uh, when as jivit in my very humble opinion is that it is not that young people are not interested that's not been my experience of so many shishyas and 
including this fellow sitting right here. And the thing is that when he came to me, he was 18 years old. He came to study engineering in my university in the US. And interestingly, very first time he came, very first time he came, some Swamiji told him that, oh, there is this professor, go see him. He is not always in mechanical and um, electronics is my field. So he came to see me and asked him, what do you want? And he said, Professor, I want Jnana. That's what he said. I don't know if he remembers or not very first. <laughs> I came to get Jnana from you. And this is an 18-year-old speaking. And after 10 years, he's stuck to me with super glue. <laughs> I'm trying to break him. So all these fellows, they've changed their lifestyles. They've literally changed their lives. Literally. The, I'll tell you, what is the process? I want to give a positive spin on this. Actually, we don't have a problem. In, in my opinion, we don't have a problem. But we need solutions. That's all. We need solutions. Okay. And it is very easy for somebody of my generation. I'm 71 years old. And I can look at that and I can look at these fellows in their 20s and say, oh, stupid people, this younger generation is so bad, blah, blah, blah. And they can also do that. They can look at this stupid old fellow and he doesn't know anything. And, uh, th th these are easy things to do. But l let me tell you more fundamentally, I think, what the solution is. By the way, I'll come to this book. This is an attempt in that direction. You see, I have spent... Uh, five, almost five decades. I've spent 49 years in the field of electronics. Uh, this includes my student days and all that, but I've done a lot of research. I've graduated 80 plus students, you know, in the uh, master's PhD level. I've done all that. I've chaired conferences. You, whatever people do in that field, I've done all that. And obviously that's not the reason I'm sitting here today. <laughs> right? I'm sitting here for a different reason. So what happened to me, forget about other people, I, I can tell you about myself, is that until I was, uh, I think, 37, 38, something like that. No, not even, maybe 36. All my focus was on the Western concept. Because that was what I was fed. The Western concept of success. The Western concept of value. The Western concept of samskara, and so on. And I fell for it. I actually fell for it. And, and I'm not the only one. There are millions and millions of young people who have fallen for it even today. And suddenly something happened to me when I was 36 years old. It's a little personal, but my father passed away at that time. But... Uh, that in itself is not the thing. The, my, my question was, what is death? What does that mean? You know, is it like a concept where it is the end with a full stop and it's over? And people say that, oh, you have, but you don't know the most common phrases people use in America? Say, you have but one life to live. So enjoy it. Have fun. You have but one life to live. And our own people have started saying that. I've heard our people who claim to be quote unquote Hindus, whatever that means, they started saying that. My thing is, who's, who told you that? Who, who said that? Who, who told you that? And the thing is that this concept of a time period in which in one lifetime you have to somehow accomplish something somehow now what does that mean it depends on our you know individual chosen professions being an academic for me number of publications number of millions of dollars i brought in I, see it is a metric that is imposed by society to measure success. And I try to succeed 
by using that metric that somebody else perhaps culturally alien to me told me if you do this you are successful and you cannot blame my 18 year old boy or girl if they are looking up to that and say oh this is what i have to do to do success but in our sanskriti in our way of thought the problem is that every bhasha every language every language is an external manifestation of a way of thought if you don't have a concept you won't have a word for it culturally you don't have a concept why will you have a word for it so when you are looking at cultures that are so different in de- even defining the very meaning of life and defining what is value not just for you it's not about me you know what the biggest value of sanatan dharma in my opinion my humble opinion if you say, if you ask me if you tell me hey can you define you know it's very easy right in religions if somebody says uh what are you and somebody says i'm something something and they say what does that mean they say oh uh i have to follow this 10 rules or five things depending on who you talk to and they say you do this don't do this so this is if you say if you live inside a fence a predefined defi- a fence for you that's what i believe my thing is fine if that's what you choose to do that's fine but if somebody asked somebody of my somebody who subscribes and studies lives the vedic way of life it's not even a religion in that sense of the word it's not a restrictive thing that is why a dogra from jammu can say that a fish in the lake is sacred and i may say something else coming from karnataka where i'm from but we are all the same <laughs> because we believe in searching for the truth at the end of the day we want to search for the truth the eternal truth whatever that means and go towards that at the journey on the journey as you gain more and more gnana i don't want to say knowledge more and more gnana am i right sir we are relaxed we are seekers instead of believers y- yes and and not just that not only seekers you know what is the biggest thing for any of us that's why i go searching various places even now anubhava is important at the end of the day you know you can read all these books and all that who you know but anubhava is important i have to experience that if i experience that there is no better proof than just listening to somebody or reading some book or whatever so what is my anubhava but the problem is that my anubhava is different from your anubhava we are all unique my guru used to say that adhyatma is an attempt is an attempt to put into words my anubhava which really cannot be put into words that attempt is adhyatma right so when i was sitting to 3 days ago on the banks of ganga um he requested me to do this so i was performing a homa sudarshana homa right next to ganga and when we were doing that there were bunch of people every so often that people screaming ah ah and you know who they are people rafting on the river so you talk of development 
the infrastructure you see ganga ganga mata even in that you know even in that shloka itself i don't know how, how many people think about just yesterday i gave a talk on that in rishikesh is a gange cho mane cho ivo godavari saraswati narmada sindhu kaveri jales so why are we starting with ganga why are we not starting with yamuna because yamuna is a bigger that river than ganga physically so why are we starting with ganga why are we putting ganga on top and am i really invoking rivers in my water no 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 excuse me i'm not invoking rivers i'm invoking the devata shaktis who are behind those rivers and they can come and reside in my water yes they can but do i believe in that so this very story of ganga which all of us have heard i'm sure every single person in this room has heard of bagiratha bringing ganga down to earth and all these things right what does it even mean you see the problem is the fundamental problem is when you look at vaidika gnana uh some of you may have science engineering background perhaps so i'll just if you don't mind i'll just one analogy from that okay so in the field of electronics right all of us have a uh, cell phone um, probably most of us have mobile phone we have a phone so if you open that phone yeah, there'll be somewhere between 20 to 30 chips in them if you break open the chip there are millions of transistors in that thing okay yeah? and they do various things as a user you're not really concerned how someone like me designed that chip <laughs> you can't you don't care you just want to know how to use that thing you are looking at the end use of it that's all secondly even people like me engineers like me we depend on the physicists right who will write full order differential equations and all that right so there is that there is the science there is the engineering and there is the end user i think if somebody who is trying to just buy a cell phone to talk to somebody far away that's what that person wants to do but he goes and says he buys a book on uh, quantum mechanics and looks at schrodinger equation or something like that we <laughs> this it seems like there's no relationship whatsoever between, because there's some long equation that that's all and he says well, what is that i just want to talk to my wife in america you know what i i have a use in the vaidika sampradaya when every single person thinks that they can go directly read the upanishads or something like that and decode that just like decoding a differential equation you cannot do that you cannot do that but there are scholars whose job is to study preserve the physics part of the vedas if you will and they it also takes people like me to take that science by the way let me assure you i've done this for decades now there is no better science i don't say this with emotion i say this from experience there is no better science in this world than vedic science in bhishma yudhishthira samvada in mahabharata there is a shloka after vishnu sahasranamam you know there's a what they call phalashruti it says yoga gnanam tatha sankyam vidya shilpani karmacha veda shastrani vigna vignanam etat sarvam janardanat this is not my quote this is bhishma's quote okay, in mahabharata so when you look at that look at all the things he talks about yoga yoga gnanam tatha after sankhya numerology mathematics yoga gnana tatha vidya you say wait what do you mean vidya i thought you already said gnana so what is gnana what is vidya shilpa shilpa shastra what you may call sculpture 
And then he says, Vedaha Shastrani Vijnanam Etat Sarvam Janardhanat. When you think about that and you go into that, the question is, how can we solve real problems? See, my thing is not, you know, what Vasishta experienced in a guha in Shupuri. <laughs> what about me today in India, whatever this place is called, research center? What about my life? What about my experience? What about my problems? So what is in the Vedas that can help me live a good life now? Okay, I'm not concerned about some 10,000 years ago, somebody said some complicated thing in Samskrita. That using that Vaidika Jnana to come up with a set of solutions, not original, there's nothing original in this. Nothing. I'm telling you, it's not my theory, nothing. I didn't come up with anything at all. This is something that's been around for a long time, thousands of years. But when we talk about success, this book is about success. How to be successful? Not by the Western definition. You see, most of us don't even know the Panchakosha. We just don't know what that means. I, I, I start thinking that this body is me. That's why I spent so much uh, attention on that. I go dieting. I eat good food, exercise, all that to keep it in good shape. But what about Pranamaya Kosha? He says, what? <laughs> that's a that's a sad situation. You say, what diet do you have for pranamaya kosha? What exercise do you have for pranamaya kosha? What does it even mean? How about manomaya kosha? How about vijnanamaya kosha? How about anandamaya kosha? This is what our people said for tens of thousands of years. Either they were complete idiots, which they were not, or there is some much deeper understanding of this sadhana sharira. We call it sadhana sharira. In English, you say, my body. <laughs> right? well, what else can you say in English? Say, so, yes, my body. I want to look good. I want to be healthy. So when I say, I want to look good, I really mean, I want my body to look good. I'm not saying, I want to look good. I'm saying, my body should look good. When I say I should be healthy, I am saying my body should be healthy. So which means that culturally, there has been misappropriation of the Sharira. The Sharira has been misappropriated by the word body, whereas to such an extent that you go look in a dictionary, in you type in, in Google, what is Sharira? It says body. So, okay. Not, not in our Samskriti. No. No. There are five layers. And this body, this human body, we call Sadhana Sharira. We don't say just Sharira. Sadhana Sharira. So when is a person with a Sadhana Sharira successful? When he or she has done Sadhana. <laughs> Period. Right? If I design an airplane, okay, and the airplane is supposed to fly. Nobody says how good is that airplane by how fast it can go on a before takeoff on the road on the tarmac. <laughs> That's not it's only when it gets up in the air, you say how is it flying, right? Similarly, this sharira is meant for sadhana. And success is sadhana, right? So, if, that completely changes the very definition of success for us. Completely. Secondly, dharma. If we say, oh, okay, we are all saying, oh, you know, ours is not a religion. So, okay, what do you call it? Oh, we call it sanatana dharma. I say, okay, good. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> so, what is dharma and what is sanatana about it? Dharma 
is in a way a very complex world at the same time it can also be very easy when you view it when you view it in the construct of sadhana it can be very simple i tell my own students i say that you know you want a simple definition because i'm a simple person you know i, I don't complicate matters i i like simple things everything if you understand things properly okay if i cannot reduce a concept to one sentence that means i have not understood it there are details that's a different thing you know you can go delve deeper and explain things for a long time and all but if i cannot tell you you give me whatever concept you want if i cannot give you a one sentence proper definition of that that means i have not really understood it <laughs> or i have not experienced it so if you say what is dharma i say okay simple if energy is being sucked from society for my well being that's adharma if energy is coming out of me and going to society that's dharma simple so i have to ask myself when you talk about sadhana sadhana for who sadhana for me or sadhana for society so success when you talk about success if you ask me are you a successful person i'd say yes actually i am why not because i'm a became a professor not because of that there's so many no big deal i'm a very ordinary person very very ordinary person from a very ordinary family very ordinary background i've done nothing great but that doesn't matter it's not about me dharma simply put very simply put it's not about me that's all my life my sadhana whatever you want to fancy words you want to use when i say it's not about me i understood sanatan dharma the famous vishwamitra gayatri after saying ganga chamane chai and all that we do <laughs> gayatri japa some of us do it in in gayatri japa you say dhimahi there is a word says dhimahi i i i don't pray and say give me this give me that i said let us all get that Uh, this is the very essence of sanatan dharma it's not about my moksha the question is what am i doing to help somebody else get better you know i have a very simple like i said i'm a simple person i have a simple uh, practice habit person just personal habit when i wake up in the morning every day i wake up in the morning i'm very happy i woke up because last night i didn't have a guarantee that i would wake up nobody gave me a guarantee seven years eight years ago i had a heart attack so they carried me in the ambulance i was thinking at that time i thought maybe this is my last day perhaps i was not upset i was not scared nothing i just my I was talking to my favorite form of bhagavanta am a krishna bhakta so I, i said hey krishna maybe this is my last day that's fine if if that's your wish that's fine but i look back and said okay am i satisfied with what i have done for society for dharma am i satisfied profession all that fine my family is fine thankfully we are all fine i'm, I'm not even thinking about it and the answer is no i have not i still have work to do i still have work to do so my thing is if you give me more time it's up to you either way is fine but if you give me more time please make sure that i'm in a i'm energetic and i can do things and have the capacity to do things i don't want to be just lying somewhere like a patient you know i don't that i don't want that's all or give me a brand new body which will have the energy to do it that's all this is sanatan dharma again these are my opinions you don't have to agree with me i'm just sharing with you for good or bad 
they gave me a mic <laughs> and made me sit here so I can talk. So I'm giving you my, my, you know, my personal way of looking at things. So success, when we, when we, when my editor, right, uh, he said he'll come, well, he's not come, so uh, it was published here in Delhi. There's a, there's a publication company called Rupa Publications. And uh, um, so when, when I had talks with him, actually, I was not supposed to write on this. The topic was totally different. So I even sent him two, three chapters and all that. And then I said, sir, no, I, I want you to write about something else. I said, what? He said, do you know young people want to be successful? So why don't you write about success? Leadership, success. From Sanatan perspective. I said, sure. Because I have something to go by. I don't have to invent anything, right? So this book, is about the 10 gunas that I did not invent that Hanumanji was supposed to have. It's about Hanuman. And the 10 gunas that he had that made him successful. You know, what is interesting is that two, I'll quote two incidents from Ramayana. Very first time, very first time, Rama and Lakshmana are, of course, they're going looking for Sita Mata and all that. And they run into Hanuman first time. Right? So his boss, <laughs> Sukriva says, go. The two princes come, go find out. So in that incident in Ramayana, he goes and meets them in the guise of a Brahmana. Not as a Kapi. In the guise of a Brahmana. And you know what Sri Rama says? Not that he doesn't. He, he, this is all nataka for us, you know. So Sri Ram, you know, looks at him and says, Who is this person who is so eloquent, who is such a jnani and so strong? Who is this person? Rama asks Lakshman. Right? So what is it that the, the gunas that exhibited. Oh, he also says, so eloquent. He's so eloquent. I said a prayer just now to Hanuman. Buddhir balam vishodhiryam nirbhayatva arogata ajadyam vak patutva vak patutvancha hanumat smaranat bhave. So that will get reflected in us also. Right? So you have to understand who is this Hanuman? Who is he? You know, we talked about gods. Another problem with translation, people say that, oh, these Vaidic, uh, you know, people, they believe in many gods. Actually, we don't. Actually, we don't. But we differentiate between Devta Shaktis and Daiva. That, that we do. Right? But in English, there is no word for Devata and Deva. So for both, there's a God. So we also started believing, like, oh yeah, we believe in many gods, we worship many gods. You know, we have Kul Devata, you go, uh, you go to village, there's Gram Devata, there's Stan, Devata. Stan Devata. Yeah, there's so many, right? So Devata is different from Bhagavanta. Right? That's a, there's a difference. Anyway, let me not go in that direction. So when you look at Hanuman, the second incident from Ramayana actually comes from Sundarakanda. In Sundarakanda, when he meets Ravana, Ravana says, who is this mischievous monk? He said, bring him here. He's creating all this problem in Ashoka. So they, they, they drag him, right? So Ravana says, who are you? You know what his answer was? Some of you may know. He doesn't, he doesn't say, I'm Vayuputra Hanuman. He says, Dasoham Kosalendrasya. That's, that's his business card. He said, who are you? I said, Dasoham. I'm a Dasa. Who? Kosalendrasya. Sri Ram. 
ಐಮ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಸನ್ ಅದು ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಟು ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಹಿ ಗೋಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಹಿ ಜಂಪ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲಂಕಾ ದ ಅದರ್ ವಾನರ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಹೇ ಅರ್ ಯು ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಜಂಪ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾರಂಟೆಡ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಟ್ ಹೌ ಆರೋಗೆಂಟ್ ಅರ್ ಯು ಹಿ ಸೇಟ್ ನೋ 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 ಐ ನೋ ಸರ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಂಪ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೈ ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ ದೇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾರಂಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಅ ಆರೋ ದಟ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ್ ಪುಲ್ಸನಾರೋ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರೀಚ್ ದ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿನೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಶ್ಯೂರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಐ ನವರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕೇಪಬಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಯು ನೋ ರಾಮ್ ಪರಿವಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ್ ಪರಿವಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ವಿಜುವಲೈಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ಇರ್ ಗದಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಬಲ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಸ್ ಯು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸಿ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಎಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಬೋಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ಸೇವಕ ಎಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಎಪಿಟಮಿ ಆಫ್ the definition of the world success he is the very personification of success and that's what this book is about and i'm not going to go through all 10 things you know buy the book otherwise my editor will say why did you speak about it and let them buy the book <laughs> but no i'm just kidding you don't have to buy the book but, but the thing is that gnana bhakti vairagya gnana let me focus on the first guna and the last guna in between i'll skip okay gnana gnana is not knowledge it's not knowledge it's not even wisdom it's something much deeper than all that going back to ganga mata ಜ್ಞಾನ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಅ ಅನಾಲಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪರ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಐ ಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಅ ಅನಾಲಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಓಷನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ದ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೂರ್ಯನಾರಾಯಣ ಶೈನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ starting point so there is uh, samudra with uh, infinite amount of water and the sun shines on that so when the sun shines on that it takes what is on the surface of that just on the surface of you know if you go to some 500 deep depth in the ocean that's not going to evaporate it's only what's on the surface that will get evaporated that's all right so that evaporated what we call avi you know it rises the moisture rises and goes up to great heights and then it gets polarized you know why you get lightning in the clouds there's a charge plus charge minus charge and they come close they that's what lightning is so it gets charged up it's not just avi it is charged up moisture it is charged up you can look at clouds and as most of us know there are different types of clouds so you say water bearing clouds right uh in my mother tongue we um she is she speaks my mother mother tongue and we have a saying you say you know some gnani is there in society he say so glad he lives amongst us and we say ayo avaru irodena namge male bele baratappa so we say that because he is there it rains and we have grains so you say is that just a concept or is it really true 
Is it really true? Because that fellow stays there in that society, it will rain at the appropriate time in the right amount. Not just raining like floods and all that. <laughs> when it should rain, how much it should rain? And that that charged moisture, charged up moisture, what happens? It comes over the land. The wind blows it over the land. And what do mountains do? It blocks them. And then there is a pressure built up over there. This is science, right? So the pressure builds up and the water falls on the mountains. At great heights it will fall. And the, the bhumi in the mountains will absorb that water. And somehow magically, very magically, a little spring will come up. We may call it Gangotri. You go to Gangotri, it's not like the what you see in Rishkesh. A, you know, somewhat small spring comes up, but at great height. And then that somehow comes into the plains. And it's joined by other things, all the prayags. It joins all the other things. And it comes into the plains, but it comes into the plains for what? Why does it come there? To go back to the samudra. So it's a cycle. It's a cycle. So knowledge may be lost, but jnana cannot be lost. It can never be lost. And Vedas, the, the very word, what we call Veda, is not Veda Vyasa gave us in the form of poetry, prose, the Rik, the Yajur, or the music from Samaveda. That is encapsulating that in words and notes, you know, musical notes, 5,000 years ago. Don't tell me there are no Vedas 6,000 years ago. Eternal truths that has no limitations of desha and kala, no limit on space and time. It should be true for me, it should be true for a Japanese, it should be true for a Russian. 10,000 years ago, 10,000 years from now, forever. That's why it's Sanatana Dharma. And that, those eternal truths are the Veda. That's it, period. So those of us who claim that we are Sanatana Dharma people have to have to believe, live, experience those eternal truths. So, Jnana is also like that. Just like the river Ganga. So, what happens? So, that Veda, eternal truths is there. It's like an ocean. And the very top layer of that only, just the top, the depth, it has infinite depth. But just the top level, when energy, sun shines energy on this planet, our planet is a tiny, tiny part of the universe. But when the sun shines on that body of knowledge, some of it will rise. When it gets, uh, when it goes up, it gets charged, plus and minus. Certain body, we call Yathartha Jnana. Yathartha Jnana is that Jnana that will elevate you spiritually, that will take you upwards. That's Yathartha Jnana. But there's also the negative side of the cloud. <laughs> right? And that is what we call Ajnana. Ajnana is not the absence of Jnana, but it is the opposite of Jnana. It's like light and darkness. Darkness is not absence of light. Darkness has its own property. Black is not absence of white. Black is black, white is white. The two cannot coexist, that's all. But the interesting thing is, darkness cannot overcome light. But light will always overcome darkness. Jnana, Yatharta Jnana will always overcome Ajnana. Always. But Ajnana cannot overcome Yatharta Jnana. There's another, this all in chapter 1. I start with that Jnana. So there's another one which we call Viparita Jnana. And that, just like, just like your Yatharta Jnana will take you upwards, Spiritually, not physically. Spiritually, it will take you upwards. Ajnana will take you downwards. Andat tamas, it takes you downwards. This Viparita Jnana 
it doesn't do nothing it doesn't take you up it doesn't take you down but it makes you go around in circles 95% of the people are in that we in samskrita in sanatan dharma we refer to such people as nitya samsaris so you are born do some random things watch tv eat pizza <laughs> do whatever you know and then one day say goodbye go <laughs> whatever born again <laughs> what do you do eat pizza again <laughs> so these are nitya samsaris they don't do any harm see they they're not causing problem for anybody they're not going up they're not going down these are called nitya samsaris and that type of gnana when i when i when i spend my whole life doing that my entire life doing that you doomed to be nitya samsari and that type of gnana we call viparita gnana incorrect knowledge incorrect in the sense incorrect because i think i think that knowledge will give me ananda somehow it will lead me to happiness and bliss and all that my thing is when people do all these things for 50 60 years and you get to my age how come i don't see ananda in your eyes the bmw is there in the parking lot the big house is there all those things are there but i don't see ananda in your eyes you know some of these questions are difficult questions aren't they so gnana is a starting point by the way going back to the river ganga and the himalayas so why are himalayas important you know when we ask that why are they a sacred right? because in again my opinion i i've been to swiss alps beautiful you know i went to uh, that bordering france and switzerland very beautiful i i went there for some work some years ago i i, I said this is very beautiful very very beautiful i also went to badri but when i was in badri and i went to mana there's a little village called mana go up near tibetan border so when you're in that region i noticed one thing after the second day i realized something all of a sudden i was incapable of thinking anything negative about anyone when i was there i just couldn't you know i couldn't think anything negative about myself or my life or society or the government or somebody else nothing i was just <laughs> feeling good except for chinese they are not i don't care about chinese <laughs> actually i don't but the thing is question is why no that's a more important question why why couldn't i feel the same thing in switzerland and the answer to that is because just like the rain the clouds rather the clouds were stopped by these mountains at great heights our rishis and munis did tapas for thousands of years and just like they attracted you know the mountains attract the rains to fall these rishis and munis attracted this vaidika gnana into them that that is why we call the vedas as shruti not smriti shruti shruti in the what was heard they 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 never claimed they said that i came up with this thing i thought about it nothing i said i was doing tapas and this occurred to me just occurred to me so no real rishi will ever claim will ever claim that i came up with this he never said that i heard it i saw it that's it envision yeah that's it. it it just occurred to them in tapas it just occurred to them so sometimes when you say how did they know this empirical western science depends upon the pancha gnana indriyas to observe something externally the vaidika vijnana is based upon seeing the truth inside with your eyes closed and you can see it you can see it. you don't need instruments and this is a just 
barely retired professor of electrical engineering speaking <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> anupam yeah it is yeah, you're right it, it is actually you can see things you can actually see things you should learn but we should learn to shut off these sensory organs and go deep and these people these people this rishis and munis just like the water is coming from that height the gnanis the rishis are actually at very great height spiritually with tremendous potential and just like the water flows when the water flows from the himalayas to the plains it brings with it not just water but all the sattva in the himalayas all the silt it brings we are incapable of going there but so the gnana that flows with them it is not just what the words it's not the words it's not what you see it's not what you hear but it's the energy underneath which you cannot even see that's why it's sacred why is it sacred that's why it's sacred i'll i'll finish let me finish up gnana with uh, that concept of gnana why that is the foundation this this the foundation upon which your entire sadhana in this sharira is based without gnana there is nothing that's the starting point the, and in our in in our uh, vedic vedic tradition if you want to say it, they say that gnana and ananda are intertwined that is the swarupa of the jiva the swarup of the jeevas gnanananda the swarup of bhagavanta is also gnanananda the only difference is mine is finite this is infinite that's all this happens between the conversation of yagya varsha and mathri yes it, yes it does it's, actually it does yeah anand gnanananda swarup not just ananda uh, some people you know there's also we use the phrase sat chit ananda that's a slightly different concept but gnana and ananda are intertwined like this where there is true gnana there will always be ananda always there can be no or no ananda without gnana yes sir that's right real you can have happiness happiness is different bliss, bliss. again again bliss is a english word but closest closest english word for ananda when we try to understand every single vaidika concept in through english we have a small problem but nevertheless since that's the language we are using we can say bliss but gnana and ananda being intertwined always if i am if i don't have ananda I should always ask myself what's wrong with my gnana <laughs> not blame somebody else but what's wrong with me what is what is missing in my gnana a gnana just like it comes from a mountain it can only come to us through our guru parampara that's it period period i can dig a well i can take a bore well and try to get water from the ground that's also water or i can go to rishikesh or <laughs> shupuri or wherever and sit on the banks of ganga and do tapas or perform a home or whatever what a difference one month ago or something like that i did the same sudarshan homa i did it in a goshala in bangalore same thing i i'm the same person doing the same thing everything is the same but you feel so different when you are doing it on the banks of ganga it feels so so different it's a different experience right because of the energy that is in that that in that tapovan that tapo bhumi that for god knows how long i don't even know i was telling them he asked me to give a pravachana few days ago uh, in rishikesh and i was telling him i said you know i'm very humbled actually and i i feel that i'm even unfit actually to do this because in this very land who knows last 10000 years what rishis and munis have sat here and 
did pata pravachana and all these things who am i such a stupid person to sit here and attempt to do the same thing we have to think about that right Oh, there are. Who said there? Oh, of course, there are. Never hear of them. Uh, no, they no, actually uh, just a small diversion. But one of my books, uh, one of other books I've written, uh, is actually called Rishi Revealed. It was about my guru, and there are rishis. There are. are they doing tapasya oh there are there are not just on on the banks of ganga but all over this wonderful wonderful desha they are there if that was not true trust me if that was not true trust me this event would not be happening today why would this gentleman start something like this why why would people like these sadhakas come here and talk why only because that energy still exists that people still doing tapasya see the problem is madam the we have a image in our image we think somebody should have jata and we we should be sitting in padmasana and with your eyes closed and for 200 days i should not have eaten and i should be chanting om namo narayana om namo no you don't have to do any of those things there are very ordinary people with wearing very ordinary clothes doing fantastic tapasya even to this day and that is why even to this day we have this shakti this energy in this land no chinese no pakistan nobody can take that away from us that energy is there in the land in the bhumi that energy is there we have to try really 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 hard to get rid of it even then i don't know if it will be successful it will come to the surface again and again and again people will be born things will come up for sure it is happening today it will happen tomorrow so the very last guna is bala and bala again you translate look up in dictionary it says strength bala is lot more than strength in one way you can say yes it is strength but when we think of strength we think of physical strength but the bala has to be there at every single layer the real bala is in your prana shakti so when you have really really strong prana shakti age doesn't matter the diseases don't matter physical mental it doesn't matter because it can fix everything it can fix everything trust me and some people know that from anubhava they know that and that bala that energy the universe is made up of two things matter and energy and they they are dependent on each other they are also like gnana and ananda they are intertwined no matter without energy no energy without matter but you know when you look at the western science versus the what you may call the eastern science there's one one big difference the entire western science even even in health they focus on physiology ayurveda doesn't focus just on physiology they look at physiology as an outcome and a symptom and they look at the energy behind it the entire vaidika vigyana is focused on the science of energy not matter and its and its implications on matter if it is about energy and then that also impacts your mental strength the uh, you know what we may call mental stamina because for me to do something i should have that stamina and if you have that mental stamina and that energy you you can actually overcome even physical things happened to me just yesterday when we went to that vasishth gufa right 
it's way down and some of you been there it is way way down and as you saying uh, guru ji can you manage you know you okay i said now we come this far let's go <laughs> and you have to really go down you know the slopes are like this <laughs> You've been there? Yes, down and even in Kasar Devi, where Swami Vivekananda uh, <laughs> No, the problem for me was climbing down was easy. <laughs> and some of the slopes are like this, you know. But I had no problem. I really had no problem. I asked him. He kept saying, why don't you sit here and rest? I said, I don't want to sit and rest. I want to keep going. it's not because i'm physically very strong actually i'm not but it's the prana shakti it's the energy that is what we focus on that's the real strength it's the it's that sankalpa that we do every sankalpa that you do to execute that to execute that thing you know there's a saying in our thing it takes three type of uh, three types of energy to for you to succeed in anything it doesn't matter what Right? The very first thing is related to sankalpa, ichha shakti. You should want to. Do, if you are arranging these talks, you should you should want it to succeed. Right? You want you should want it to be helpful to people. That's ichha shakti, and that we can take some, you know, credit for that. But for that to happen, the very next one is nyan shakti. Nyan shakti. Where does it come from? From our gurus, of course. Then even that is not enough. You may want to do it. You may know how to do it. It may still not happen. <laughs> that is what we call kriya shakti, and kriya shakti only he can give. So when he looks at that, I also make a in a. I'm also not a, when I teach. I'm not very serious. People think that. should uh, you know be very serious so why my thing is why should i be serious and i don't say why should so i always say that shri krishna was a gujarati <laughs> so he always looks for return on investment you know? so if if he invest some kriya shakti in poor old me he is looking at okay if i invest like a startup if i invest little kriya shakti in this fe- stupid fellow how much return on investment is there but the return on investment he is looking for is not for himself because he doesn't need anything how much return on investment for society the larger that investment i mean larger that results for society dharma the more kriya shakti also we will get and that is the real strength you want to buy it buy it you don't want to buy it don't buy it. i don't that it doesn't matter to me but this is called ten gunas and uh, published by uh, rupa publications here in delhi and uh, i should actually thank my editor dibakar ghosh who made me write on this topic i, I was going to write something else <laughs> you, you know what i was going to write uh, again you're talking about traditions right so i was, i started writing a book on the science behind vedic traditions when we do puja every person in this country every person right every time they do puja they take haldi kumkum sindur chandan they, they, all over the country they do that yet we don't even know the science behind it we don't know the science behind it you and huh you must tell us but i think Uh, I started doing that. Then he said, "No, no, young people are more interested in success." And I said, "Okay, fine, whatever." Uh, actually, right here in Delhi, once uh, I had a meeting. Matter of fact, right next door, I think, right or something, somewhere close by. Yeah, there's a thing called IGNCA, Indira Gandhi something Center for Arts. So I had a meeting there. So I was talking to the director, and it just so happened my flight was. late at night or something so anyway i had nothing to do <laughs> so they said hey you know you're wasting your time oh, uh, we have a very good studio a uh, excellent studio so why don't you come and give you know like talk about something i said sure and there i talked about the science behind haldi kumkum and sindur and that has been watched by millions of people <laughs> and the thing is this is what we have to give to the young people and trust me when you do that they become almost fanatical about it 
and they will change their entire lives, what they do, how they do things. And they become so committed to this Vaidika Dharma and this Sanatan Dharma. And they are the people who will take it forward, not people like me. So I hope and pray that this forum, this Bhumi, this Sangam Tats will continue to do this and continue to bring this Jnana in words. Words cannot give Jnana, but at least they are pointers. They're, they do Margadarshana. They show the way, that's all. Right? So I hope it continues to do that. Do that. I wish you great success. So I want to ask about the Hindu phobia in the West, especially in the cities controlled by the Democrats. So what are the Hindus of the West doing academic, academic, academically to fight out the Hindu phobia? Uh, and they use caste as the tool to malign Hindus that they are these are the barbaric peoples who have suppressed some peoples for about 5000 years. So what are especially the academics are doing to fight this narrative? Nothing. But can I expand on that a little bit? I should say nothing. You know, maybe some people are doing something. The issue with not just not just that that's one incident. They'll keep on doing this. If you answer this properly, they'll say something else. Okay. So you see the problem is that when will you be afraid of somebody? You'll be afraid of someone if you think they're stronger and they may do you some harm. That's when you're afraid of anybody, right? So their so-called phobia comes from the fact that our jnana, and I don't say that in a fanatical way, but our jnana is thousand times higher than their spiritual knowledge. So, that fear, so what do you do? Get rid of them. Get rid of them. So, then you won't have this problem, right? That, that's their thinking. So, they will attack anything and everything. One, one thing we can do, you and I can do, is instead of, uh, you know, going to YouTube or Twitter and, you know, posting random comments, because that doesn't do anything, by the way. It's a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. What we should do is, first, we should understand that the Varnashrama in Sanatan Dharma has nothing to do with that word called caste. It has nothing to do with that. Secondly, Varnashrama is very different from Jati. Jati is different, Varna is different. Shri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita said, Chatur Varnyam Maya Shrishtva Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. That's what Shri Krishna said. Not my words, Shri Krishna's words. Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. So that, that, I'll tell you one other thing. And we should be able to answer this, man. You bring them in front of me, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll say, sit down, let's talk. I can challenge them. I'm not afraid. You know why? In Purusha Sukta, which is there in all the different Vedas, by the way. It's in Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, it's everything. Okay? It talks about Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. And you know which Varna the maximum importance is given to? Shudra. You know why? Because that Varna, I'm talking about characteristic of people. Okay? Shudra Varna is one of being a servant, of being service. So whether you're a professor or you're a doctor or you're an engineer or farmer or whatever you do, it says that first be a Shudra. First think of it as a service to society, service to God. Whatever you do, you do it like that. Because this entire Sharira stands on the feet, not on the head. It's the feet that take you forward, not the head. Right? So, Shudra, when we do worship, when we do puja, we keep Vishnu Pada, we don't take Vishnu's head. So we worship the Shudra Varna. We worship it. When you want to show respect to an elder, what do you do? You touch his head? No, you touch his feet. 
So that whole thing that you're talking about is based on nonsense, which has no basis, zero basis. The problem is our own people don't know how to answer that. Not just in academics, anywhere. You know, in some general, people will eat dinner, sit and talk about, hey, you Hindu people, you do caste, right? And these people don't know what to say. They'll say, no, no, I'm a Brahmin. So what? <laughs> See, this is the type of idiotic answers that are given. And how do we fight something? It's not a question of fighting. We are correcting. You want to be Vishwaguru? Not you personally. This land? We want to be Vishwaguru. We better get Jnana first. So that we can, we can answer these things in a fitting manner. ಕೌಟಿಲ್ಯಾಲ್ <laughs> No, not at all. All the four Varnas, again, uh, read Bhagavad Gita, Shri Krishna, all four equally eligible for moksha. Yes. I would have kindly elaborate about the Pranamai Kosha in detail, slightly, because I have two experiences. Good for you. I hope they were both good. <laughs> um, Pranamai Kosha in... Uh, Sadhana Sharira, the, the Vijnana Maya Kosha and Ananda Maya Kosha, right? The last two. We normally don't go there. Normally. Like in our daily lives, you know, we don't go there. But we, when you look at karma, any karma, right? Whatever you may indulge in, it comes in three forms, right? Kaya, Vacha, Manasa. So either you, your thought, your thought is karma, your speech is karma, and your action is karma. When you look at that, this is, uh, for in the first place, there should be good connection between those three. There should be good connection between your thought and speech. When I'm talking, you know, when I came here, I did not prepare for this talk at all. I never do. I, never, I don't prepare. Even when I'm teaching PhD level courses, I don't prepare. I just walk in and teach. That's all. And, and the thing is that there should be good connection between the thought and the speech to start with. And then there should also be a good connection between thought, speech and action. But action is not in my control because it's external. I mean, like I may want to come here and uh, give a speech. But what if the flight is cancelled from Rishkesh? Right? And it's not in my control. Uh, but the thought is in your control. Right? So karma, for karma to become a sat karma, there, there has to be good confluence or good resonance between these uh, three aspects. The question is, what will create that? That's a question, right? So the thought is in the mind. right speech and action is external kriya right what connects those two things is the energy that energy layer is pranamaya kosha uh, prana shakti is chalana shakti prana shakti is what gives movement both physical movement as well as mental movement mental and i would even claim spiritually also so it's the energy that gives you motion why you need good pran shakti is because energy if it's bad energy will push your mind and body in the wrong direction if the energy is downwards it will push you down it is not you know very simple or if it's horizontal rajasika it will push you in the horizontal direction if it's satvik it will push you in the right direction that's all so in energy just like in matter in matter 
like if you go to the anu uh, atomic level there are three types of so particles right electrons protons and neutrons similarly and those are by the way sat, that's what we call sat rajas and tamas electron goes upwards right uh, one has no charge neutron has no charge and there's proton with the so called positive charge uh, i say so called because i think the western people got it wrong the electron is the sattvic force in my opinion because of force but anyway let's not go there the the important thing to answer your question is that in energy also just like in matter there is sattvic rajasic and tamasic so i want to fill my energy layer prana shakti with good not just the amount is not the amount of energy amount of energy is also important but also sattvic good energy so that the propulsion the propulsion uh, the change in my mind or the motion is all urdhvamukha upward looking okay this viparita gyana going around in circles is it the result of maya uh, sir i cannot answer that question in a few minutes uh, because because of the because of the word maya to explain maya properly it will take a long time but i'll just say this very briefly is that when we get gyana of I'll, i'll give you a very silly example very very silly example uh, we think that um, um for example okay let's say i like gulab jamun suppose so i think that if i eat gulab jamun i'll be happy uh and so i ordered two gulab jamuns and i eat it and you know i say nice but the moment it's gone i'm sad <laughs> because you cannot keep on eating gulab jamun so that is only uh bound it's bound my time only as long as that physical object is in contact with one of my indriyas sensory organs so that is viparita gnana thinking that eating gulab jamun will make me happy no it doesn't so if i pursue only gulab jamun i i'm giving a silly the gulab jamuns of life you know whatever they may be <laughs> if that's all i pursue thinking that somehow it will all integrate into ananda at some point in life that is viparita gnana 